Good morning, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Ranking the Albums. Today, thanks for waiting. For all of you who requested it, and we had a lot of you, we're going to look at the studio catalog of UFO. Okay? A band that's been around a long time. A band that has a ton of full-length studio albums to their credit. God, got quite the stack here. Uh, we're not going to look at the live albums. We're not going to talk about the compilation albums, the rarities albums, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I think I'm even missing an EP here. Uh, but all of the full-length studio albums we got. All right. Uh, obviously, all opinions on these are you know based on the feelings of the poster, all right, or of the declarer, or of the person who's ranking them, right? Uh, as you know, some of these albums came into our lives at different periods, right? So for some folks like myself. Those early Schenker albums are kind of sacred. For others, got into the band in the 80s. You know, maybe the Chapman era albums are really close to close to the heart. For others, maybe they only started listening to UFO in the last decade or so. Maybe it's the Vinnie Moore albums. Maybe it's the original Space Rock albums and people jumped off board after that. Who knows? I'm sure we're going to get all sorts of people. So, again, these are just my rankings. Your mileage may vary. Uh, the point of this whole conversation, the point of this show is to put in order albums of a band we love, talk about why we love the ones we love, and why maybe we don't like the ones so much we don't. Uh, I encourage everybody to give their rankings in the comments and feedback below. Remember, there's no right or wrong answer here. Uh, let's all respect each other's opinions, and uh, be interesting to see what you guys think are some of the best UFO albums, and maybe some of the worst, right? I will go on and say that, um, for the most part, I like all these albums quite a bit. All right. Uh, obviously, some a lot more than others, but I think that most of the UFO catalog has merits on every album, but some aren't as successful as others. I mean, that's, that's pretty clear. Uh, and the, the upper echelon ones are legendary for a reason. So I'm going to start off with my least favorites. Again, you don't have to agree with this, all right? But the important thing is tell us how you rate these albums and tell us which ones are your favorites. So coming in at the bottom of the stack for me, again, not a bad album per se, but I just, I don't know, I never fully took to this album. I'm going to go all the way back to their first album, UFO 1. You know, for what it is, it's decent. It's kind of like a psychedelic blues rock, sort of space rocky album. Uh, there's a, a couple, you know, this of course is before Shanker joined the band. This is with uh, uh, Mick Bolton on guitar. Some good stuff on here. You know, Come Away Melinda, uh, their take on that song, kind of cool, kind of spooky. Uh, they also, uh, very cool, uh, Evil, Boogie is a pretty cool tune, Unidentified Flying Object, uh, Shake It About, they do a pretty rousing version of Come On, Everybody. You know, a decent enough album with some, you know, Who Do You Love, also an extended version with lots of guitar solos. For what it is, it's pretty cool. I, you know, I just, I never took to, I've had the, the first two uh, for forever and I, they're always for me they're kind of good for like a, a bit of a curiosity but I just don't think that this was a band that knew what the hell they were doing yet and it kind of comes across that way it's charming and kind of naive and raw as it is uh, I'm gonna go a UFO 2 flying next up towards the bottom I believe this is an improvement over the first uh, here the band really getting into that kind of space rock thing long extended tunes a lot of jamming you know you got star storm and flying Got 18, 19 and 26 minutes long each one. All sorts of extended stuff on there. Silverbird's a pretty cool tune. Uh, Prince P Prince Kajuko, the coming of Prince Kajuko. You know, you kind of put those two together. And that's basically the album here. Fun album, decent album. You know, again, I have a hard time looking at that as UFO because, I, I mean, it is, but UFO still kind of figuring it all out. But decent enough for what it is. All right, next up, I'm going to go to one of the uh, early Vinnie Moore era albums, The Monkey Puzzle. Probably, for me, one of the weaker um, Vinnie Moore era albums, but I still like it. You know, again, the, the Vinnie Moore era, the band kind of moving away from kind of more of their metallic days to, you know, more of like a standard, you know, modern day blues rock band. Okay. Some great guitar work from Vinnie Moore. You know, Phil still sounding, Phil Mogg still sounding great on vocals. Uh, some good hooks on here. I like a lot of the songwriting on the uh, Vinnie Moore era albums. You know, for me, it's just kind of missing that 
danger and virtue and not that Vinnie Moore is not a virtuoso but there was something about those uh, early albums with Schenker there was like uh, you know kind of like you can compare it a little bit to those the early Deep Purple recordings right uh, with Blackmore there was just an element about Blackmore that just gave that edge to those Deep Purple songs back in the 70s same thing can be said about the early uh, UFO run with Schenker which I think some of the Vinnie Moore era is missing although good songs good hard rock and bluesy songs right can't say anything really bad about it, just uh, maybe not quite as memorable, not kind of like dangerous and filled with, you know, a little bit on the edge. Uh, next up, I'm going to go with The Visitor. Solid album. Solid album, I think. You know, here you have, you know, Phil, Vinnie Moore, Andy, Fra Andy Parker, and Paul Raymond, uh, I think just delivering a, a very solid album. Maybe not a lot of absolute standouts on here hell driver is pretty good uh rock ready i kind of like what else living proof is good again good album not legendary album all right next up high stakes and dangerous men i actually only got this like maybe a year or two ago i uh, had this on lp way back in the day that went by the wayside so it took me forever to get this back on uh on CD, this has got uh, Lawrence Archer on guitar, his one and only appearance with the band, along with Phil Mogg, Pete Way, and uh, Clive Edwards on drums. Of course, uh, Lawrence Archer had played uh, briefly with uh, Phil Lennett's uh, Grand Slam. Very good guitar player. Not a bad album. Not a bad album, you know, as UFOs kind of moving into the 90s, uh, but very much a band in flux at the time. All right, Phil trying to keep things together. Uh, you know, Mr. Schenker will be coming back soon enough for a brief spell. But some good tunes on here. I like this album. It's not classic UFO, but pretty strong. Some good tracks. You know, Borderline, Backdoor Man, Running Up the Highway, Burning Fire. I dig it. All right. I'm ki I kind of have a little bit of a soft spot for Mr. Beaner. You know, this came out, I was... Uh, I was still in college when this came out. I think this came out, what, 87? Something like that. 87 or 88. I don't know, somewhere right around that time. And, you know, UFO had basically broken up for a couple of years. And then uh, Phil decided to put the, the band back together with uh, Atomic Tommy M, Tommy McClendon on lead guitar. Young guy, flashy guy, big hair. Uh, this is kind of UFO doing their kind of like, you know, almost like pop metal type thing, like everybody else was doing in the mid-late 80s. And, uh, you know, kind of a little far removed from their roots, but I kind of gravitated towards this album when it came out, and I kind of dug it. Uh, I thought this time is a, a really fun, uh, accessible hard rock tune. I dug that quite a bit. Uh, what a Mean Streets, good rocker, probably the heaviest tune on this album. Uh, Heaven's Gate, Reckless is, is fun. What else? Blue, I kind of like. Night Run is good. I don't know. I just, it's a pretty solid album for what it is. I just, uh, again, you know, sometimes albums hit you at a time in your life and you kind of gravitate towards them and you have fond memories of them. I, I'm sure there'd be a lot of people who say that this is probably one of the worst UFO albums ever put out. But, and again, not one of the best. I will agree with you there. But uh, I kind of have a little fond, fondness for it, right? All right, we're going to go with Seven Deadly next. Another of the more recent albums with Vinnie Moore. This is a pretty good album. I dug this one a lot when it came out. Uh, I still listen to it from time to time. Steal Yourself. Mojo Town. Angel Station. That's a good tune. Some solid tracks on here. Phil still sounding good. And, uh, you know, I got to say, Vinnie Moore, great performances on all these albums he's done with UFO. I really like the guitar work he's done uh, live. He hits all the special things you'd want him to do to cover the Shanker stuff and brings his own identity out there. Very, very good player, I think. All right, next up, I'm going to go with uh, Making Contact, going into the 80s here. You know, this is kind of the, uh, the Paul Chapman era, the Tonka era, kind of basically coming to a close. Not as successful as the albums that came before it, but I think, you know, some good stuff here. Uh, Diesel in the Dust, You and Me. What else? The Way the Wind Blows, The Way the Wild Wind Blows, No Getaway. That's a pretty good song. I, you know, I, decent enough album, right? Some good material on here. Probably not that strong front to back, start to finish, 
but I think it has uh, enough of that kind of mid UFO sound to it. But uh, they were obviously kind of uh, sputtering a bit at this point in time. All right, I'm going to go with uh, You Are Here next. This is, I believe, the first album with Vinnie Moore, if I remember correctly. And this also has uh, Jason Bonham on drums. I, you know, I thought he was a really good fit in UFO. I thought not only I like Jason Bonham's drumming, I think he's got that kind of, those heavy hands that are perfect for this band, you know, fill in for Andy Parker. Uh, he also lent some some good backing vocals, but uh, wasn't meant to last, right? He, I think he left here to go to Foreigner, right? He's He just bounces all around all over the place. But uh, When Daylight Goes to Town, very, very good song. What else? Uh, the Wild one I like on here a lot. Slipping Away, uh, Mr. Freeze. Mr. Freeze is good hard rocker. Uh, Jello Man, another really, really good song. Baby Blue. I think, uh, in fact, I probably have, yeah, this is this is probably, well, my next to top favorite of the Vinnie Moore era. And I remember when this first came out, I was like, wow, this is a, a match that really works. All right, next up, this is my favorite of the Vinnie Moore era. And ironically, the last uh, all new studio album of new material that we will probably see from the band conspiracy of stars all right the killing kind run boy run sugar cane devils in the detail the real deal rolling rolling king of the hill this is basically phil mog Vinnie Moore, andy parker rob deluca and the late great paul raymond a uh, very very solid album like i said i i, I dig all the Vinnie Moore era albums i do all right, next up, we're at about the middle of the pack here. So we're going to go with Mechanics. A really strong Paul Chapman era album, which I always enjoy quite a bit. What do we got in here? Doing it all for you. We belong to the night. Dreaming. The writer. Something else. Good guitar work for Mr. Chapman on here. Band just really gelling quite well. Getting past the, you know, now a few years past the hump of Schenker leaving. I think really kind of solidified as a uh, strong touring band that's drawn a lot. Albums selling decently for Chrysalis Records, you know. Uh, no Place to Run, coming up next. This was the first post Shanker studio album. You know, I've always had an issue with this album in that I think, uh, you know, produced by George Martin, of course, the George Martin, right? Best known for his many years working with the Beatles. Uh, I think that the songwriting is here. I think these songs are good. I just don't think that George Martin worked well with a heavy rock band like UFO. Because I think this album, while the songs are really good, the playing is really good, the vocals are great, a lot of hooks and stuff like that, I just think that George kind of sucked all the oomph out of the band uh, as far as... It's just, this album is just like... It's missing some balls. The tunes are really good, Right? Letting Go, Mystery Train, Gone in the Night, Young Blood, No Place to Run, Money, Money. The songs are good. Just, man, need some guitar oomph, all right? Just the, 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 need some bottom end. I just felt that this the, the production left this album just really shiny and bright and kind of crystal clear. And, you know, you want UFO to be down and dirty and rugged. And I just, I don't know, I just, I, I would have liked, uh, you know, George Martin, legendary. Not for this band. My personal opinion. I know people love this album. As you can see, where it comes up in the list, I do like it. I think the songs are really good. I just, man, I would have liked to have heard a different producer working on it. That's all, that's all I'm saying. All right, next up, we're going to go with Covenant. We're going to go to the uh, reunion with Shanker in the 90s. I think those three albums they did with Shanker in the 90s are pretty damn good, right? They don't quite hold up like the 70s stuff, but, you know, a lot of that fire is back. It's something about Phil Mogg playing with Shanker. It just sounds right. You know, love this forever. Midnight Train, Fool's Gold, Middle of Madness. You know, a lot of solid tracks on here. And Schenker, you know, playing up a storm. Though, you know, right around that time was when he kind of slipped into the abyss for a bunch of years. Um, thankfully, he kind of got himself out of that. Or Michael, although I, I need I, I hate to say it again, but you need to stop trashing your brother and your old mates in the Scorpions, dude. It's just it's ugly. So you don't need, don't stoop to those levels, man. It's like every, every time I turn around, he's saying something else. It's like, ugh. All right, next up, we're going to go with Sharks. Uh, I dig Sharks. You know, I mean, for me, uh, Covenant Sharks and Walk From Home, for Walk On Water um, are so similar. All right? 
This has got uh, Ansley Dunbar on drums. Very solid album. Not that different from Covenant. Cool, heavy riffing. A lot of great solo and great vocals. Uh, you know, some catchy hooks here and there. You know, songs maybe not as memorable as the next one, uh, Walk on Water. This is the first one that they did together, the first of the reunion. Uh, you know, this is, this is quite good. You know, self-made man. A lot of good darker days. Knock, knock, running on empty. I mean, yeah, top to bottom, pretty damn solid. Close to an upper echelon UFO album, in my opinion. Shanker playing with a lot of fire here. Like, all right, so now kind of the cream of the crop here. So I have always thought that the best of the Chapman era albums was The Wild, The Willing, and The Innocent. I stick by that. I just think that this this album has the crunch and the punch and the balls that No Place to Run lacked. All right, and while that may have had maybe maybe the songs might be a little bit more memorable on that album to some, I just I like this album. It's back to basics, heavy UFO. I dig it a lot. You know, Chains, Chains, Long Gone, It's Killing Me. Great song, Making Moves. You know, right there, just those songs alone, enough to elevate this album. Profession of Violence, the title track. I just dig this album. This album's got a lot of heft, and I like that. I want my UFO with a little bit of heft, all right? So that's coming in, uh, what are we, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? Yeah, that's number six on my list. All right, coming in number five, we're going to go with No Heavy Petting. You know, this, all these albums coming up are, for me, just absolutely amazing. Barely a bad song on any of them. You know, Natural Thing, I'm a Loser. Belladonna, Can You Roll Her? On with the action. It's my buddy Sam's favorite UFO song. Uh, Reasons Love, Martian Landscape. Top Shelf UFO. Weird ass hypnosis cover or not. Uh, a very cool, very cool album that I dig a lot. You know, I, I could have flip-flopped these two here. I really dig them both. The top three are always going to be the top three. But, uh, you know, I, I've always got a special place in my heart for Phenomenon. The first with Shanker. You know, the band, I think, coming to grips with their new guy in the band, their new young German guitar god. Uh, I got the language barrier and all that kind of stuff, but musically they were really clicking. I think still trying to figure out things. You know, they went from the uh, kind of the space rock and blues rock early period to hooking up with Shanker. You know, after working with uh, Mick Bolton and Bernie Marsden for a little bit of a spell, uh, kind of trying to make it work with Shanker. There's some classic... UFO Shanker stuff on this album. A couple tunes that are kind of like, you know, maybe harken back to the early albums, but still trying to figure it out. They would, you know, really, on the next album, just explode. But I think there's enough great stuff on here. You know, Oh My is a great kickoff track. I always like that song a lot. Uh, Crystal Light is a very cool kind of psychedelic bluesy rock tune that's a very underrated song on this album. Uh, you've got their staple, Dr. Doctor. I've never been a huge fan of that song. I know a lot of most people are like, oh my god, it's the best song. Eh, I never saw it. Uh, Rock Bottom. Now that that could possibly be their best song ever, right? Amazing. Uh, Built for Comfort. Lipstick Traces. Queen of the Deep. Another contender for one of the better tracks on the album, right? I think next to Rock Bottom, Queen of the Deep is amazing. Uh, what else? Space Child. You know, it's just a really solid album that I think opened up everybody's eyes to what this band was capable of. All right. Which I think they would fully realize on Force It coming in at number three. You know, this, uh, again, I want to prep. There's a lot of people that I've talked to um, in the course of my life when talking about UFO who proclaim that this is the best UFO studio album. And, you know, I can't argue it too much. I think my two favorites are my two favorites because those are the first two that I got. I was heavily into those before I even bought this. And, you know, a lot of these songs, many of them made it to the Strangers in the Night live album. And I think the version, the live version is arguably better. But there's some great songs on here. You know, Let It Roll, Shoot, Shoot, Out in the Street, Mother Mary, This Kids. Okay, I mean, right there legendary songs but you know high flyer love lost love very underrated song all right you know, mother mary god dance your life away top to bottom 
great. Loads of riffs on here. Killer solos. You know, if you were to tell me, Pete, sorry, before it's my favorite, and I'm sticking to it, I'm not going to argue with you, right? Like I said, if, if I didn't have the history with Lights Out and Obsession, I'd probably agree with you. But it's my number three. It's a strong number three. Coming in number two, for me, is going to be Lights Out. This is the first one I ever got. And, you know, I remember like I remember exactly when I bought it. Uh, my, my parents and myself and my brother were visiting my grandparents who lived down the Lower East Side of New York City over on Grant Street. And uh, my father worked for the city of New York in the municipal building down over near Chinatown. Not too far from Chinatown. And uh, he, his building was right across the street from J&R Music World. Well, if you're not from New York or New York area, you probably have no idea what J&R Music World was. But back in the, in the 70s and the 80s, a very popular, even into the 90s, they closed a while back, a very popular kind of like electronics and music store. All right. They had like a whole block, a whole bunch of stores. You know, they sold like TVs and stereos and, uh, you know, all sorts of stuff and tons of music. So I remember um, my father, I went to, we went to go, my father, I think it was during the week. We were off from school. It was probably in the summertime. And we went to go see my father at work and he took us, you know, out to lunch. And I, you know, I was a music fan, right? Young kid. And I said, Dad, can we go to JR Music? Because whenever I would ask him to pick me up an album of something, whether it be a Kiss album or ELO or, you know, whatever, because I was pretty young, uh, he would go to JR and buy my record for me. So he took us over to JR Music. I'm going through the stacks of LPs, and I just happened to see this. I had no idea who UFO was. And this is back in the day where you would, you know, and the record was four or five bucks, whatever, at the time. This is probably like 1979, maybe 80, okay, something like that. And uh, I just bought this just because. And I remember getting back to my grandparents' apartment, and they had an old Victrola stereo from like the 50s or whatever. I mean, ancient thing, uh, you know, with the pull-out uh, pull out turntable and the big wooden doors on, all that kind of stuff. And I put this on. The first thing I hear is too hot to handle. I'm like, holy cow, I dig this. My grandparents and my mother were kind of like, the hell is this kid listening to, right? But man, just uh, too hot to handle. Just another suicide. It's try me. I remember hearing that blistering solo in Try Me, and I'm like, oh my god, love this guy with the with the flying V. I think that's what it was, the flying V that got me. Uh, of course, title track lights out. All right, electric phase, and then the amazing love to love. You know, I could mention every song on here, but love to love a great song. So I was just, I was totally smitten with these guys. And then, of course, a couple of months later, I had to go get this, my number one favorite UFO album of all time, Obsession. And I just thought that as great as Lights Out was, this kind of dialed things up another notch. And I think that I've always thought that this album has Michael Schenker's greatest solo in on any studio album. Just amazing, amazing stuff. Uh, Only You Can Rock Me, Pack It Up and Go, one of my favorite UFO songs of all time. Just, I just, every time I hear that song, I'm just amazed by his like crazy solos and fills all throughout that song. Killer. Uh, I Ain't No Baby, heavy and mean, right? Looking out for number one, majestic, melodic, all right? Hot and ready, good kind of kick-ass bluesy rocker. All right, and you got Cherry, you don't fool me, sledgehammer rock. All right, looking out for number one reprise, and then uh, an amazing one more for the rodeo, which I thought was like a really kind of gutsy, groove laden, heavy rock tune. Uh, just absolutely love this album. Love the production of Ron Nevison. Uh, always love the uh, really cool hypnosis album cover art there. Kind of mysterious and weird. I actually bought this uh, on a on a T-shirt recently. I remember my wife looking at me. She goes, "What is up with that on your shirt?" Why do those guys have all these weird, like, marbles in their eyes and nose and mouth? I'm like, I don't know. That's the album cover. She goes, giving me that look like, oh, my husband listens to some weird-ass shit, man. And then he goes and buys a t-shirt with it on it. What is wrong with him? Anyway, that is my ranking of the UFO albums, all right? Some great stuff here. Love talking about this band. So that's what we want everybody to do. Talk about UFO below. Uh, which albums are your favorites and why? Let's start off from the top. All right, let's work our way back. So my favorite is going to be UFO coming in at number one, Obsession. My number two is going to be Lights Out. Number three, Force It. Number four, Phenomenon. 
Number five, no heavy pet. And if I lose track of the number, don't 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 kill me. Number six, the wild, the willing, and the innocent. Number seven, walk on water. Number eight, sharks. Number nine, covenant. Number ten, no place to run. Number eleven, mechanics. Number twelve, a conspiracy of stars. Number thirteen, you are here. Number 14, make in contact. Number 15, seven deadly. Number 16, misdemeanor. Number 18, <laughs> high stakes and dangerous men. Number 19, the visitor. Number 20, the monkey puzzle. Number 21, UFO 2. And number 22, UFO 1, right? Like I said, I'm sure your lists are going to differ from mine, and that's perfectly okay because, quite frankly, there's going to be fans of all these albums, and that's the way it should be, right? Because we all hear things differently. Uh, I think the bands appreciate that some people love their albums. Maybe some people don't, but you get a wide variety of opinions on them, and that's the way it should be. So list your favorites and why, or maybe talk about your least favorites and why. Remember, there's no right or wrong answer here. Appreciate everybody who's given uh, their picks below. This is on the web at www.catranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Of course, we're on the mighty YouTube all the damn time. More stuff coming up. Uh, may or may not come back with something else later today, but definitely tomorrow, Monday, you'll see some more content from me. Not quite sure what that is yet. I got a stack of new stuff that I got to review for the website and on here, so I'm going to hopefully get to some of that tomorrow. All right, so what do we got here? We got some cool stuff from King Crimson and uh, Bebop Deluxe and... All sorts of other stuff. So that'll be coming at you in the days ahead. All right, guys? So take care. We'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.